Lion Pride versus Wolf Pack. What if these two groups of animals met and fought? Who would win? It is well known that lions and wolves are some of the most powerful predators in the world, and some of the few animals that form very strong packs. Basically, these animals cannot be found naturally in the wild. The largest and most powerful wolves, grey wolves, live in North America and Eurasia, and lions live in Africa. The lion has a number of characteristics that differentiate it from the other wild, predatory cats of the world. One of the key differences is its social behavior. While some lions are nomadic and prefer to travel and hunt individually or in pairs, most lions live in a social organization known as a pride. It's a trait that's quite unique among the world's large cat species, most of which are lone hunters throughout their adult lives. Wolves are large carnivores, the largest member of the dog or canid family. Wolves are common to all parts of the Northern Hemisphere. They are usually shy and cautious around humans, but unlike the dog, have not been domesticated at all. They also live in groups called packs. The organization of a pride or pack. The size of a lion pride can vary widely and the structure differs between African and Asian subspecies. On average, a lion pride consists of about two or three males and five to ten females, along with their young. Prides with as many as 40 animals have been observed. In the typical African pride, the females form the core of the group and tend to remain in the same pride from birth until death, although females are occasionally expelled from the pride. As a result of remaining in the same pride throughout their lifetimes, female lions are generally related to one another. Due to this permanence, lion prides are considered to be matriarchal in their social structure. A wolf pack is an exceedingly complex social unit an extended family of parents, offspring, siblings, aunts, uncles, and sometimes dispersers from other packs. There are old wolves that need to be cared for, pups that need to be educated, and young adults that are beginning to assert themselves, all altering the dynamics of the pack. The job of maintaining order and cohesion falls largely to the alphas, also known as the breeding pair. Typically, there is only one breeding pair in a pack. The loss of a parent can have a devastating impact on social group cohesion. After the alphas, wolves second in command are called the betas, followed by mid-ranking wolves, and finally the omegas. Both mid- and low-ranking positions are somewhat fluid. Pride or pack behavior Cubs in a given pride are often born near the same time, with the females serving as communal parents. The females suckle one another's young. However, weaker offspring are routinely left to fend for themselves and often die as a result. Lions usually hunt with other members of their pride. Some experts theorize that it's the hunting advantage a pride offers in the open plains that may have led to the evolution of the pride social structure. Such hunting areas are populated by large prey animals, some of which can weigh as much as 2,200 pounds, making hunting in groups a necessity. A lion pride spends a good deal of time in idleness and sleep, with males patrolling the perimeter to guard against intruders. Within the pride structure, females lead the hunt for prey. The pride gathers to feast after the kill, squabbling amongst themselves. While they do not lead the hunt in a pride attack, nomadic male lions are very skilled hunters, since they're often forced to hunt small, very swift game. Whether in groups or alone, the lion hunting strategy is generally slow, patient stalking, followed by short bursts of speed to attack. Lions do not have great stamina, and do not do well in long pursuits. 
Living in a pack not only facilitates the raising and feeding of pups, coordinated and collaborative hunting, and the defense of territory, it also allows for the formation of many unique emotional bonds between pack members, the foundation for cooperative living. Wolves care for each other as individuals. They form friendships and nurture their own sick and injured. Wolves and other highly social animals have and pass on what can be best described as culture. A family group can persevere for several generations, even decades, carrying knowledge and information through the years from generation to generation. Wolves play together into old age, they raise their young as a group, and they care for injured companions. When they lose a packmate, there is evidence that they suffer and mourn that loss. When we look at wolves, we are looking at tribes, extended families, each with its own homeland, history, knowledge, and indeed culture. Their size and appearance. African lions can grow to between 9 to 10 feet long, 3 meters from head to tail, with the tail being about 2 to 3 feet long, 60 to 91 centimeters. They typically weigh between 330 to 550 pounds, 150 to 250 kilograms, with males reaching the higher end of that range. Not only are male lions generally larger than females, but they also have a distinctive thick mane of hair around their heads that females lack. The biggest and most fabulous manes are more impressive to mating females and more intimidating to competing males. The mane also protects the male's neck during fights over territory or mating rights. The grey wolf has a familiar body shape, as they are the ancestors of our domestic dogs. They have a thick coat of fur, which helps to trap body heat and keep them warm. This fur color varies greatly across their range, not only being grey as their name may suggest. On the face they have a long muzzle and large ears, which assist them with finding their prey. Their legs are long, and end with a large foot that has claws at the end of it. Their body measures between 3.2 to 5 feet, 1 to 1.5 meters long, and weighs 35 to 132 pounds, 16 to 60 kilograms. Males are typically larger than females. Now let's see what it would be like if a lion's pride met a pack of wolves who would win? First of all, the ferociousness is not all about raw power. Wolves are canidae, lions are felidae. It is scientifically proven that cats are better than dogs. Canidae are split into two groups, hunters that catch with stealth and hunters that attack with power. Stealthy hunters sneak up on their prey, they are built to move across the forest floor before bunching up their muscles and gracefully leaping atop a squirrel. Power hunters chase large animals, gaining speed and snapping at hooves and flanks. All of the stealthy hunters are extinct now. This is because of the cat. They are also stealthy hunters, and so competition for the canines. Because of retractable claws, cats were quieter and more efficient stealth hunters, so more hunts were successful. Dogs soon died out due to the lack of food. Felidae made Canidae extinct. Not just one or two species, but a whole subclass. At the same time, lions in Africa had to coexist with hyenas and African wild dogs. A clan of hyenas had no problem taking on a pride of lions. African wild dogs yield to lions, but when they had the numerical superiority, they would be bold enough to steal food from lone lion. Lions may be bigger and stronger, but wolves don't perform in the circus. So, would a pride of lions defeat a pack of wolves? 
probably if the numbers are right. On the other hand, a large pack of wolves, say 30 wolves, could handle a small pride of lions of, say, five. A big pride would be formidable, and no wolf pack would ever take them on. The weight, strength, and bite power of a wolf and a lion are incomparable. They weigh more than double that of a wolf and can leap and jump. Even if a wolf got a hold, the damage it would receive from the lion's claws alone never mind its superior athletic ability to contort and twist its body, would soon injure the wolf deeply. A lion can break a neck by biting, not so easy for a wolf. A wolf has only his dog bite and stamina. A whole pack of wolves against one lion would still mean a lot of injured wolves for maybe one eventually worn down and fatally injured lion if they all got a throat hold. So, in my opinion, even if the number of wolves will be much higher than the number of lions, lions will emerge victorious. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button.